Buon Natale, everybody, and greetings from Italian America. We are here in the heart of Little Italy in the Bronx, New York, the Arthur Avenue retail market, and it is a very special Christmas episode. We're going to be taking you through the essential steps for celebrating Christmas Italian style, and we cannot wait to show you guys the best of the Bronx. We even dragged Pat out for this one. You look happy. I'm only here because I got the gobbled cell over there. You see the gobbled cell? Joe, yeah, we got the gobbled option. cell? Oh, guys. I'm only here. We gotta go buy the fish. Wait a minute. Enough, Wait, guys. there's two Stop. kinds of tripe. I never knew tripe came in multiple kinds of, and I knew there was like goat tripe, but I never knew that there was multiple denominations of cow tripe, yes. and that's why I'm here. If you look behind okay, you. Okay, one's for the salad. We, we hold on, we have the salad Let's tripe. Go. Wait. Go, Pat. Fish go. time. We're going to share with you the list of essentials for an Italian American Christmas. There's no better place to start than the fish market. And I am here at Cosenza's Fish Market on Arthur Avenue. This is a 102 year old family business, fourth generation, and this is where my family and I buy all of our Christmas Eve fish every year. Because Christmas Eve is probably the most sacred of the Italian American traditions. Families all over the country still keep to the Feast of the Seven Fishes. Now, if Pat was here, he would tell you seven is not a required number. Some people do 11, some people do 13, some people do three. The, the most important thing is to keep to an odd number and keep fish on your table. You can't eat meat. And there's a lot of great options. So if you are an Italian American and you're saying to yourself, hey, I want to keep the traditions, but I live in Boise, Idaho, and I can't get this kind of fish, I got the number one recommendation for you. You probably heard of it. This is bacala. It's salted dried codfish. It comes from Europe, comes into the markets like this, and if you're gonna get it yourself, you can get it anywhere around the world. There's everything from galamad to sardines, anchovies, smelts, scungi, clams. Uh, here's another great star, the octopus. Look at this, this, this is a legitimate fish here. And uh, the most important one I think to me after bacala is the capitone, the eel. It's the equivalent of a turkey on Thanksgiving for Italian American Christmas Eve. It's a really succulent fish, very, very unique taste, and places like this, they have them live at Christmas Eve time, and you can come in, pick your eel, make it a family tradition. It's something really worth trying. If you haven't had it in a few generations, I can tell you from my family, it's a well-loved part of the feast. So if you don't have a fish market, reach out to guys like this, and uh, we'll make sure you get some fish for Christmas Eve. Bro, what do you got? Thanks, John. That was amazing. But seriously, though, the fish is great. But when it comes to Christmas, I'm looking forward to the cookies. I don't know about you. Absolutely. Definitely. So we came to the spot at GDO Pastry Shop, one of the oldest pastry shops here in the Bronx, to talk about some of the most classic Christmas cookies that you make in the Italian tradition. And we brought with us expert Daniello Terry, the godmother of the Arthur Avenue Food Tour, to unlock some of the history and mystery behind some of the most classic Italian cookies there are. So what do we got here, Danielle? What's going on? So we've got the Cucidati cookies, which are of course really popular with people with Sicilian roots. We've got the Rococo cookies, which mm -hmm. come from Naples, but my personal favorite, being Neapolitan, Struffoli. You've done, everybody, even if they're not Italian, has seen Struffoli yeah. and probably loves Struffoli. I mean, what's not to love? They're fried, they're covered in honey, and they're sprinkled with gorgeous colors. Yeah. Sugar, right? sugar, fried, goodness, what's not to like? Now, the Cucidati are, are really popular in the Sicilian culture, but I've totally seen people that are not Sicilian make them, and they throw some crazy stuff in the filling. It's all about that filling mixture. And what I always tell people is that it is like an Italian Fig Newton. Yeah, I mean, what's it, it's so With delicious. more sugar. With more sugar yeah. and sprinkles and just mm -hmm. gorgeous. And then we have the Rococo cookies. Who can forget these? I have like memories from my childhood of these, actually, trying to eat them because they're so hard. They always made me nervous. I stayed away from them. <laughs> <laughs> so these are really, really hard because back in the day, Italians needed to make stuff last. So they wanted to make a cookie that was nice and hard and dunkable. Um, but it's nice on a plate. All right. I think, you know, we're going to be adventurous. We're going to try one. Okay. You ready? You ready for this? Yeah. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Cheers. Let's go. Oh, you could. All right. You know what? <laughs> I think it's time to go take it over to Pat. I'm gonna. I'm gonna work on this. Rosella, you have no appreciation for the rococo, but that's another story for another day. 
We're at Marie's Roasted Coffee Beans and Gifts, and what we're going to talk about right now is tombola. Now, this is what a to this is what tombola is. Tombola is basically like a Neapolitan bingo. Now, a lot of Italian Americans after the war played uh, Pochino, which was a bingo type game with a deck of cards and they'd have little chips. And that comes from Tombola. Tombola was a game that was invented in 1734 during the reign of Charles III, Carl Terzo, who was really the first, who was the first Bourbon king of, uh, of Naples. And Charles wanted to legalize the lottery at that time. And there was a Dominican friar who fought against it because he thought it was going to be a vice for the people. So this is kind of what came out of it. It is a Christmas lottery, kind of what they have in Spain. So what people would do is they would put these uh, numbers, these numbered chips, in a, this basket. And you shake up the basket and you let the number come out. And then you call the number and then the number is on the tombola card. Everybody would get their own card. Tombola is what they played to keep the to keep the nights interesting. So you remember something in the in the age before radio and television, the, the nights were long. There was no electricity. You'd sit around the fire, and so for the time between Christmas and the Epiphany, people in the in Campania and then throughout all southern Italy would play tombola. They'd gamble for a little bit of money, and they would they would mark each space with a bean. And that would be the space marker. And the joke, the joviality about the names and the pictures was what would make it enjoyable. And when the Italian immigrants came to the United States, they substituted Pochino for that. That's why a lot of people know Pochino as a game that they played during Christmas. So I highly recommend go out, get a tombola, get the family around the table, have everybody put the phones away, have a lot of fun, learn Neapolitan. Who needs Italian when you could speak Neapolitan? And now back to John and Ro. I want to go eat. I've had enough of this. And Roselle is now going to talk about Panettone. Let's say, hope she has a little bit more respect for Panettone than she did for the Neapolitan Rococo. I'm done. Well, there's no better expert than Pat when it comes to this stuff. Oh, Patrick. <laughs> All right, but let's get back on track. So if you're talking about Italian Christmas essentials, there is one non-negotiable here, and it is the panettone. You either love it, you hate it, or you give it away. Over and over and over again. This is probably the most re-gifted piece of Italian Christmas mm -hmm. on the planet. Sometimes it's the same panettone, just round and round and round. Yeah. Start marking them. Yeah, got to mark the bottom. You'll know if it came back. I find panettone interesting. It's a Milanese thing. It's huge in Italy, but nowadays you can get like a billion different kinds. There's yeah. cassata, uh, chestnut. I like chestnut. They have pistachio. All different kinds. There's a panettone for everybody and every personality. Yeah, I love it. Pandoro. You can you can eat these things forever. And you can also use them as an ingredient in different recipes. You can make French toast. You can make zuppa inglese. You can make tiramisu. It's it's really become kind of the number one Italian Christmas ingredient and gift. Yeah. You know, to, to some lucky or unlucky people, we haven't decided. Chances are you're going to get stuck with one, so it's good. You could uh, follow a row and you can find a lot of ways to use this thing over and over. And they last a really long time because there's a lot of butter. <laughs> That's the northern Italian. So we're going to meet Pat in the Arthur Avenue Market, and uh, we're going to show you the next tradition. I, I don't want this. No, I don't. I don't want this. I have to take it. I'm not taking it. Put it back. We have been up and down Arthur Avenue all day, and this is a place that's really special to me. I lived here for five years, and in the five years that I lived here, I got to know a really special guy. He's at the corner of the Arthur Avenue retail market, Mike's Deli, foundation of this community, and really a place you can come and get everything, top quality, and you get a lot of personality from my friend David Greco. Hello, Mr. Viola. Always great to see you. Rosella and Pascurilla. How's your brother? You staying out of trouble? Thank God. <laughs> So we wanted to come see you. I always want to come see you, but uh, you know, you guys have pretty much everything you need. Christmas time comes around. What are people looking for? The lines are long. Listen, thank God our paisans come from all over. Again, here it revolves around quality. Quality product, quality service. I have the best customers. It's all about my quality customers. So people want us to help if it's new Christmas Eve, we're doing Christmas Eve, usually the seven fishes. I was featured on Food Network with Bobby Flay with the seven fishes. Yeah, and we right. make from fried shrimp, fried scallops, the baby fish. We do our seafood salad. Everybody's is different, but we help people if they want to do three or four fishes, we'll make four or five of them for them. Christmas Day, it revolves around the antipasto. 
So whatever grandma's making, whether it's a ham, prime rib, always there's pasta, but it always starts with antipasto. Prosciutto di parma, parmigiano, fresh mozzarella. Pasqua, wrap it up in the prosciutto, you'll be okay. <laughs> That's your so style, warm. prosciutto oh. di parma reserva. So yeah, really we had this, can I, tell, can, I, can I talk out of school? This is the happiest We had this prosciutto day. before <laughs> we started, and I could not wait to come back. I've been rushing through every segment because this prosciutto is that Pasqua, good. Pasqua, I wouldn't disappoint you, you know that. And I put you in the category with my customers, high quality. So guys, the show may be over, but the fun doesn't have to be. Uh, if you guys want to keep it going, please click below and turn on our Yule Log. But it's not just the Yule Log, it's a sauce Yule Log. Shut up. And it's, <laughs> it's going to be a pot of sauce Crazy. with DJ Kavav's top picks for Italian songs. He's got the craziest library of Italian and Italian American music. 24 hours of Neapolitan Christmas music on the gravy log. Okay. All right. Gravy log. And we, and we've we want, whittled but. it down, mixed in a little bit of Italian American stuff, and uh, it's a long one. We hope you play it for your entire family this holiday season. So, from all of us, the Italian American podcast and the Italian sons and daughters of America. Buon Natale. Buon Natale. Buon Natale. Santa's got a little friend, his name is Dominic. Hey, the cutest little donkey. You never see him. So back to Christmas. There is one non-negotiable. Ah, non-negotiable. Alright, so back to Christmas. There is one non-negotiable. Stop that. Dominic the donkey. The Italian Christmas donkey. Children dance around the square and Dominic starts to dance. Hey, look at the maidens, Derby! So, from all of us at the Italian American Podcast and the Italian Sons and Daughters of America, Buon Natale. Buon Natale. Come get the pursuit. A chingity ching. It's Dominic the donkey. A chingity ching. The Italian Christmas donkey. La 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 la